man's DNA. That's where they're getting these concepts from. That's who Dagon was. Uh, the Little Mermaid. The Mermaid King uh, is half man, half God, half sea creature. I've always been fascinated by these two characters. Um, and it basically started, Patrick Duffy, you remember him from Dallas? He actually had an earlier gig, and I wish it would have taken off better, but it never did. He was, NBC came out with a movie called The Man from Atlantis. Started out as a movie, I think they made a, uh, a sequel to it, and then they, they tried to run a TV show of The Man from Atlantis. Patrick Duffy was The Man from Atlantis, who had web fingers, and he swam like that. I learned how to do that when I was young. I could swim like that. Didn't get very far, but I could swim like that. I thought that was so cool. This guy can breathe water. He has gills. That concept was based upon these half-human, half-god characters, Dagon and Neptune. We have Prince Namor, the Submariner. I didn't really... He, of course, he was Marvel. I didn't read much Marvel. Prince Namor was always... He was mean. I mean, he just had a foul nature about him. But uh, Prince Namor, the Submariner, he was a hybrid. He was half-human, half-god, Dagon, from Atlantis. Now, Atlantis is the land that existed before the flood that had all these secret powers ruled over by ten kings think about that and it sunk underwater I think Atlantis is the idea of the antediluvian pre-flood world ruled over by the giants back in the days of Noah as it was in the days of Noah that's what Jesus said is coming to us so that's where the submariner Prince Namor came from now a character that I liked a lot better then the Submariner, because he was Marvel and he was mean, was Aquaman. And that had to do with uh, Saturday morning, the Justice League of America and the Wonder Twin Powers and, oh, yeah, all that stuff. But Aquaman and Wonder Woman and Batman and Robin and Superman were all part of the Justice League of America. The superheroes who were going to bring truth and justice in the America. I just, I just love that. And Aquaman was basically the same character. His early version has a, and this is a, came out in two separate uh, comic book series. His other version, his father discovers Atlantis and its secrets teaches his son how to live underwater. But then afterwards, they retold the story. Now he's Orin, and he's born of Atlan and Atlana, the king and queen of Atlantis. And again, he is a half human, half god, submariner type thing, a Dagon type god. Who is, he is another god that rises up from the depths of the sea. So what I'm, and let me read this to you, Revelation 13, 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth is as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon... That's Leviathan, according to the Bible. Gave him his power and his seat and great authority. You see, Aquaman, just like Prince Namor, these are God kings that rise up out of the water. Now, Revelation 13, 18 sort of gives you the, the gel or the consistency of this half-human, half-God thing. Watch this. Revelation 13, 18. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Notice that, let's go back and look at, uh, let's go back and look at Dagon. And I'm almost done for today. We've had enough, all right? And it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. Dagon is beast and man together, hybridized into the same body. Remember Horus. Beast and man together. Uh, the picture of house, beast and man together. Um, all of these characters with wings or hawk man or the green man or whatever, they are hybridizations. They are the offspring. They are half beast, half God, and half human. And so here's something that's in the Bible. It's been there forever. And I just noticed it a couple years ago that this beast has a number. And it's the number of the beast 
and the number of a man. 603 score and 6. Now if we were to break it down to its simplest saying, the number 6, we go back to Genesis chapter 6 and that's what we see. Sons of God, daughters of men, and they produce these comic book characters. They produce Namor and Aquaman and Hawkman and all of these superheroes, mighty men of old, men of renown. These things that, uh, and they're worshipped like the green man under the green tree and things like that. And these things, God told his people, don't follow after them. Don't learn their stuff. Don't learn their ways. Now the devil, we, we mentioned this uh, the last watchman. He's going to send his false prophet to deceive mankind. Many false prophets are out there right now deceiving people. Telling them stories that everybody says, well, they're just stories, they're lies, they're mythology, they're made up. You take them so seriously. Actually, they are just the figments of imaginations that are based upon the reality of what the Bible is teaching you. And the Bible is trying to give you wisdom by, so that you understand half human, half God, a Savior that's going to rise up with great powers. He is going to be a God King over the earth. And he's going to be so mighty and so powerful that who is like unto him, who is able to make war with him? Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. And nobody can beat Superman. So the comic books, the graphic novels, the TV shows like Smallville and Lois and Clark and Batman and Robin and all of the even the 60's version of Batman and Robin all these ideas trying to get you to the idea it's planning this subliminal message in your mind what if there really was a superhero what if there really was a man who had these magnificent powers and he took, he took and, and defeated the evil foes that were trying to conquer us we would make him our king, our God. If you watch The Man of Steel, The Man of Steel, Clark Kent, Jor, uh, uh, kal -El, Superman, finally convinces the military guys, I'm on your side. You don't have to fight me. I'm on your side. The whole world is going to wonder after the beast who has the number of a man. They're going to worship him. And God was telling us all throughout the scriptures, don't do it. Don't learn their ways. Don't do it. It may look like mythology now, like science fiction. But even I saw, I saw a brief interview with um, Leonard Nimoy, Spock. Half human, half Vulcan. Remember that? Two Vulcan? Half human, half God. Or, yeah, half alien. Leonard Nimoy talks about, he said, you know, you remember watching Star Trek in the 60s and they had the tricorders and they had this and they had the other. He said, we have that now. And it's a general idea that your, your thoughts do produce fruit. Careful little eyes what you see, little ears what you hear. But the idea that these myths, according to the Word of God, there really is a son of Satan. And he really is going to take over the world. That's what's being taught. I have a ton more information to give you. And I'm not trying to just drag this out. I've spent a lot of work and a lot of research. And I've had this in my mind to do for a long time now. And starting next week, we're going to get into this idea of the dying God. Because we have mentioned Thor a while ago. He's died, he's buried, he's brought back to life, and he has greater power after that. Boy, wait till you see what I've got on this one. So we're going to talk about a lot of things coming up, and including what the end game of all of this is. Where is it headed? And we're going to talk about where these guys got their ideas. You'd be amazed. So anyway, that's coming up in the next Watchmen video broadcast. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I hope it's been educating to you. Those of you who, uh, let's say you've never heard of me, never, never considered the Bible much. 
but you love comic books. There is a comic con. It's setting you up. Setting you up to believe a lie. Don't fall for it. There's actually, God has greater people in the Bible. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This Bible has better stories than that, I promise you. Anyway, God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.